so here's the question. Can we leave the diagnosis at the top of the hill? Older people are nature deprived. How often do they get out to feel the breeze in their hair? It's not 24 seven now. So like we're taking a walk in the woods and I don't have to watch every single second or if I want to walk off by myself, I can do that. I know that some of us, I definitely am, coming to memory camp with some apprehension, a little bit of nervousness, some anxiety about what's going to happen here. We also come with hopes and we come with joy and we come with excitement. You ought to see my Cindy, she lives away down south. She's so sweet, the honeybees swarm around her mouth. Get along home, Cindy, Cindy, get along home, Cindy, Cindy, get along home, Cindy, Cindy. This is my wife, Barbara, oh, for 53 years. <laughs> And this is the first time that we've actually had a chance for the just the four of us to be together in a long, a real long time. We are here because we have, it's been so long since we've shared a bathroom together. <laughs> I was diagnosed about um, 10 months ago, and it's just been a really rocky kind of rugged time. And I was looking forward to getting together with um, folks that share the same journey. And... Um, just gain some courage and strength. So thank you all for coming. We believe that it is possible to have joy and meaning and experiences of awe in a, a place like this. All right, uh, we, we've launched. So welcome uh, to virtual memory camp. Um, of course, uh, we know that we can't really create the experience of being in memory camp, but yet we wanted to give you a taste of, a little taste of what it would, might be like. And um, I do wanna take a moment just to thank the Imagination Network uh, the, our friends up in Canada for their inspiration. I watched a, a program that they put on earlier um, called Raising the Curtain, the Backstage Pass, and that inspired me to reach out to John and Susan to do this today. Thank you, Gary. So we are that same John and Susan, <laughs> and we hatched this idea of a memory camp back in 2017, uh, visiting Moon Beach Camp, which is one of three facilities operated by United Church Camps, but Moon Beach is in a glorious setting and had a long history of family camps that included a family member with a special challenge, in this case, autism. And we thought if autism was not a barrier to families and individuals having a marvelous experience of nature and creativity, dementia should not be either. So in 2018 and again in 2019, we had memory camps at Moon Beach, again, a glorious setting in the North Woods. And there, Susan said in the little video that began, we could check the diagnosis at the top of the hill and simply enjoy one another without stigma, awkwardness, embarrassment, just to be free to be ourselves and support one another. So the um, uh, inspiration for Memory Camp came from a marvelous organization in England called Dementia Adventure. And I recommend you Google Dementia Adventure and find out what they do. Um, with the pandemic, they've probably cut back on some of their activities, but they took people living with dementia on five day sailing trips and they took hiking trips and and closer to home they will go for weekly walks in parks and the idea is 
that dementia should not prevent you from getting out into the natural world and enjoying yourself. So they inspired us and helped us at the beginning. And what we'd like to do with this program is to encourage other people to think about whether they also could form memory camps. There are residential camps all over this country. And some of them, I think, must be ADA accessible like Moon Beach is. Moon Beach has uh, places where they've got uh, roll-in showers and there are no steps and anybody with a wheelchair or walker can get around easily. And, and we have a highly talented and skilled uh, golf cart driver. John. <laughs> But we think that there are other camps around the country that could also do this. And we would be really happy to consult with anybody uh, who would like to uh, be inspired by this and maybe try it themselves. Um, our camp has camperships. We don't want uh, funding to prevent anybody from coming. Um, the Respite Care Association of Wisconsin has given us a grant to support people coming. So in your local region, uh, look for people who would like to help out by giving you a grant to support folks to come to memory camp. So we're really pleased that you are here today. You're going to see some of the campers that you saw in that little video that we opened with. You'll see them later because they submitted art and it'll be exciting for you um, to view their art. Uh, and our theme for today is hospitality, just as that is our theme at camp, is that we welcome everyone. And we hope that this time together will be a kind of respite from the pandemic. Uh, just as Memory Camp is a respite for everyone uh, who comes to that beautiful setting. So greetings, everybody, and we're going to turn it back to Gary. Thank you, Susan and John. That was great. Um, so, so much of what we do is around participatory arts that we thought we would encourage you throughout the uh, web webinar today to participate. And so with this next one, uh, we're gonna listen to a song called Holy Ground, and we're gonna hear a traditional acknowledgement of native lands. So you can think of uh, what ground you might consider holy in your lives. And also, if you know, you can type into the comments uh, the native lands that you are living on. So let's, uh, let's go to now uh, to the campfire. Uh, we're, we're so many of the wonderful experiences at Memory Camp. And this will be with Phoebe, the co-director of Moon Beach. That's right. We're going to hear Phoebe in just a second here. And again, I'm going to look at him go. Now you should see that. And I hope you do. Okay. Mm -hmm. campuses Cedar Valley, Pilgrim Center, and Moon Beach, which is home of Memory Camp, 
are located on the ancestral homelands of the Menominee, Ho-Chunk, and Ojibwe nations. Currently, there are 11 federally recognized Native American sovereign nations in Wisconsin. We acknowledge these First Nations communities who have stewarded this land throughout the generations and pay respect to their elders, past and present. Take off your shoes, for this is holy ground. Stand on holy ground, this is where I do my living. Take off your shoes, for this is holy ground. And on this holy ground, you see God's footprints all around. Take off your shoes. We just want to really think for a second because of all of the folks out in California. Now, I, I grew up in California, so I have family and that's safe, and but some friends that are being affected. And, and of course, uh, you know, it's Oregon and Washington. There's you know, hundreds of thousands of people. So we just want to acknowledge that uh, while we're showing images of campfire, we know that uh, they can comfort and they can terrify. And um, we back up to them and warm our hands and our fannies, uh, but they can also be, um, you know, very frightening for people and being affected. So we just want to acknowledge that. And the whole idea of doing this uh, comes out of the response uh, to quarantine and COVID-19. So we, we have so many things that are coming at us now. We have climate change, we have social justice issues, we have losses of jobs and social isolation. Um, but we want to let you know that we're with you and we send out our hearts to the folks in uh, the Western states. And I want to share um, a little bit of a, a poem that I wrote um, that's a dedication to my poetry teacher, David Rolfson. And I want to say that having grown up in Northern California, I would like to acknowledge that my youth took place in the traditional lands of the Miwok people. And I pay my respects to elders, both past and present. Black Point, California. One day each year, the hills are suddenly green. And another day, they're all at once gold. It happens without notice, in the glint of an eye, the way a lizard's tail will break off in your hand, the way water collects in the crannies of a black oak and waits there for a child's imagination to still it into a cistern, to be drunk on a journey to the place where a mine can take root. It is fast as swinging from a eucalyptus tree, the branches arching out over the downward slant of the hill and how when you let go for a brief moment you fly and so i dream of going back to be too quick to hold one day green one day gold ah <sighs> so i want to um introduce this next video uh which is the carlson bosch and west families they probably don't pronounce it like that but that's how i say it we're going to watch this video and we encourage you your participation on this is to sing along and, yeah. and gary i think it might help to say that uh carlson's and bausch's are a married couple actually ordained clergy persons uh, Kathy is the one who received the diagnosis and talked about it earlier. We yeah. also see their daughter and her two children, yeah. all of whom came to both of our memory camps. That's right. Yeah, they are core uh, core participants. They're core campers. <laughs> and uh, and thanks for the little bio sketch about them too. Um, we're going to talk more about doing outreach and 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 support calls and all that and and what that part of this project was. Um, so, but let's let's now watch uh, watch the video with Mike and Kathy and their uh, grandkids and daughter. Here we go. One, two, three. I 
We're the pile of nature. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Oh my God, that's so good. a miracle. <laughs> now, uh, Mike and Matt, you you uh, are being so great with sharing your family and inviting the grandkids and your daughter uh, to participate as well. Uh, but I wonder if you have some questions for Wade and Lydia about the new sand. Hmm. It, what color is it? Um, when you get the sand, it's a very light tan. Okay. Like, can you see it in my hand? Yes, I can. Mm -hmm. it's, it's almost white. It's a very light tan. Is it? Now, uh, Lydia, can I ask you, because that was really cool what you did. Can you take another handful of sand Put it up closer to the camera and just let it slowly fall. All right, here we go. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, pretty. Mm. Love, lovely. Uh, oh, my God, we got to give the sand a round of applause. Oh, my goodness. Hey, sand. Sounds like also making the sound of the sand. <laughs> I love it. Now let's all do that. Here we go. Here we go. Ready? On three. One, two, three. <laughs> and I loved what Lydia said. She said it sounds like the wind blowing when the sand is. Yeah, it's the leaves. Right? It sounds like the wind blowing in the leaves. Blowing in the leaves. Yeah. How do you spell it? Almost like a waterfall or something. Like a, a waterfall. Now like here's, a light sound of a waterfall. Here's the yeah, that's what I thought too. Sounds Let's good. see if we can meet the challenge. Uh, Mike, how close is your guitar? Oh, it's in the next room. Can you grab it real quick? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm loving this image of the wind blowing in the leaves and the sand. It really reminded me of like a hourglass, you know, those old hourglasses that we used to keep time with. It's like what you guys use to brush your teeth sometimes, the hourglass. Yeah. It tells be time. Let's be careful. So you brush them for the right amount of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Because I thought you were going to say you brushed your teeth with sand. I was going to go, oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's like the worst when it gets in your mouth, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, I've gotten it in my mouth, and it does not does not feel good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you hurt my jaw when I chew it. Like I'm like, oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All good. right. Hey, do you want to see how much? It, okay, can you give us the fun seal? <laughs> we have a lot of nice soft sand here. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> you make it nice and soft. I'll All right, so here, here we go. This is our challenge. Mike and Kathy, you guys got to figure out, to, and probably using some melody you already know or some song, but I don't know how you're going to do it. But you've got to take the words um, soft sand and wind blowing through the leaves. Mm. And... Um, I don't know. One other thing. What's what's one other thing we should add, Brianna? What should we add? One more thing. What do you think? <laughs> Still there, Brianna? I don't see her. Missing. <laughs> I lost her. All right. So, so I don't know. Um, this is. I guess. Okay. Like the answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. <laughs> I'm sure you know that one, don't you, Mike? <laughs> I think we may have lost the, uh, the well, that's okay. we can work on the song until they get back, because I think we lost them. Lost the kids. We'll get them. There you go. That sounded nice. The answer, my friend, is blowing in the sand. The answer is blowing in the sand. 
How many trees does it take in a day to make the sound of the wind through the leaves? How many leaves must we all see until we see, see, see we are free? <laughs> All right, all right, all right, great. So time out, time out. Now we gotta uh, we gotta add a line about Moon Beach. Moon Beach. Yeah, something about Moon Beach or memory camp, something about that. What are you missing the most, Kathy? What do you miss the most about going to Moon Beach and memory camp? I miss um, how free I feel there, and how how um, how I just don't worry about anything. I don't worry about losing words. I don't worry about um, it's just it's just a place of haven and safety. A place of haven. I love that, and I also like. Uh, uh, We're back. That you feel free. <laughs> You, you, it was perfect timing because we worked on the song. You're not going to believe what Mike and Kathy came up with. Thus far. It's so great. My my phone overheated, actually. I had to put it in the freezer for a couple minutes, and now we're back in action. That's a new technique. Wow. Yeah, I you know, had no idea that that... Yeah, I was, I I was wondering how we were going to bring in the hoppers. I did not know that the hopper was going to hop the phone into the freezer because it was getting too hot. Oh, my goodness. Nope. Right, uh, I never heard of that before. <laughs> yeah, it was right in the sun, I think. So I'll have to figure out a way to get in the machine. All right, Wade and, Wade and Lydia, we've got a little, a little, we've been working on a song since you, you guys went to the freezer to put to cool the phone down. You guys want to hear this? <laughs> You can sing too. You'll, you'll catch on too. Uh, Mike's. Uh, I hope. Did Mike go put his guitar in the freezer? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh wait, I'm gonna get my. Wade's gonna get his guitar. Or your oh, harmonica. Cool. Wade, get your harmonica too. I heard you playing some. Uh, Wade. All right, here we go. Let's give it a little. Well, this is our first rehearsal. Oh, what are we doing? We're gonna do the answer. My friend is blowing in the sand. The answer. We need some verses, right? Yeah, we need a couple of verses. Can you answer my friend? He answered it going in the sand. All right. So let's see. Now it says how many miles, right, is the real words? How many mm. miles? And we want to say... I, I just... Uh, I, well, my mom is getting away. I'm here to call it instrument, so she'll be right back. Okay, good. I, I That's very good. We got to figure out how to work in somehow. Um, how many miles to Moon Beach? Something like that, maybe? What do you think? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know how many miles. I'm guessing over 200. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, four. How many miles does it take to drive a car all the way to Moon Beach? <laughs> How many roads do we travel along? To get there before it is dark. <laughs> the answer, my friend, blowing in the sand. The answer is blowing in the sand. <laughs> Take it away, Wade. <laughs> One more time, let's hear it again, Mike. Here we go. The answer, my friend, is blowing in the sand. The answer is blowing in the sand. 
<laughs> oh, that's so sweet. How many roads does it take to drive all the way to Boom Beach? And how many miles can we ever go? Before we get there to before the dark, <laughs> the answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. Yeah. <laughs> the key's a little tricky. <laughs> that way. Yeah, thanks for that. And uh, just wonderful, Gary, for you to spend time with some of our alumni uh, from past memory camps. And it just makes me so sad that we had to cancel this year's because of COVID. But we hope next year to have a wonderful memory camp. Uh, we provide the loons. <laughs> we provide the eagles. We provide the lake itself. But as we've been saying all along, it's about being a community of care because dementia is really challenging to live with. Whether you're the person with the diagnosis or you're a care partner, a spouse, a child, whatever, uh, a care partner's day is never done. So it's respite for everyone. Uh, we have wonderful staff who prepare glorious meals, provide many of the activities we have to choose from through the day, but then we care for one another. Uh, volunteers really are a very important part of what we do there because if you're a care partner, say a husband, uh, you get to go off and have a walk in the woods or this or that and a volunteer steps in to spend time with your loved one uh, and we all become part of the same community. But we heard mention before of hoppers. This has nothing to do with frogs or any other amphibian. <laughs> Rather, it's a tradition at Moon Beach when we gather for these fabulous meals. Uh, someone at each table, maybe more than one person, is the hopper. And he or she hops up and goes and grabs the bowls of food that we eat family style and brings them to the table. And when we're done, they hop up and take them back. So everyone gets to be a hopper and a hoppy. We, we get to hop for others and we get hopped on or something like that. <laughs> and it just is all part of being a community together. Again, without stress, without anxiety, without stigma. Uh, you know, if you're like a husband or wife or a child and you're out in a public setting, a restaurant, it can often be this little edge of anxiety. What if he, she, they do something unusual and it disturbs other people? at memory camp, none of that matters. We're all free just to be ourselves. Everyone is respected, everyone is free. So I'm going to introduce the next part of this program. And it's a very exciting part of this program because we had people all over the world contribute art. We called it a found art project. And the origins of this found art project came from people who are on this call right now. Uh, and you will see their art. Bye, Bob. <laughs> Bye, Bob. And, Bob and Marge. Marge. Um, you'll see their art first in these slides that we're going to show you. But you're also going to see some art that was submitted from other memory campers. Uh, and uh, they uh, assembled their found art. Uh, things from nature or things from in their homes or both. 
and uh, they took pictures of the art and they took pictures of themselves. Uh, we called people, we emailed people. It was just wonderful to be in contact with folks. And we've widened the invitation so that we have people who submitted art from Australia, Canada, Germany, and Iceland. And just to put in a personal plug, our grandchildren in <laughs> Minneapolis. <laughs> so take it away, yeah, let's Gary. Look at, let's look at the art real quickly. <laughs> Where the buffalo roam, where the deer and the antelope play, where seldom is heard a discouraging word, and the skies are not cloudy all day. Where the oh, air is so pure, the zephyr so free. The breeze is so balmy and light that I would not exchange my home on the range for all of the city so bright. Home, home on the range where the deer and the antelope play. Where seldom is heard a discouraging word And the skies are not cloudy all day To the bank of Red River Where seldom, if ever, Their flickering campfires burn How often at night When the heavens are bright with the light from the glittering stars have i stood here amazed and asked as i gazed if their glory exceeds that of ours home home on the range where the deer and the antelope play where seldom is heard a discouraging word and the skies are not cloudy all day. Oh, I love these wildflowers in this dear land of ours. The curlew I love to hear scream. And I love the white rocks and the antelope flocks that graze on the mountain tops green. Oh, give me a land where the bright diamond sand flows leisurely down the stream where the graceful white swan goes gliding along like a maid in a heavenly dream home home on the range where the deer and the antelope play where seldom is heard a discouraging word and the skies are not cloudy all day then i would not exchange my oh, range where the deer and the antelope play where seldom is heard a discouraging word and the skies are not cloudy all day home, home on the range where the deer and the antelope play where seldom is heard a discouraging word and the skies are not cloudy all day Low, 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 me a 
home where the buffalo roam where the deer and the antelope play where seldom is heard a discouraging word and the skies are not cloudy all day where the air is so pure the zephyr so free the breeze is so balmy and light that i would not exchange my home on the range for all of the city so bright deer and the antelope play where seldom is heard a discouraging word and the skies are not cloudy all day to the bank of red river where seldom if ever their flickering campfires burn How often at night when the heavens are bright with the light from the glittering stars have I stood here amazed and asked as I gazed if their glory exceeds that of ours home home on the range where the deer and the antelope play where seldom is heard a discouraging word and the skies are not cloudy all day oh i love these wild flowers in this dear land of ours the curlew i love to hear scream and i love the white rocks and the antelope flocks that graze on the mountain tops green oh give me a land where the bright diamond sand flows leisurely down the stream where the graceful white swan goes gliding along like a maid in a heavenly dream home home on the range where the deer and the antelope play where seldom is heard a discouraging word and the skies are not cloudy all day then i would not exchange my home on the range where the deer and the antelope play where seldom is heard a discouraging word and the skies are not cloudy all day home, home on the range there are a lot more pictures deer and the antelope play where seldom is heard a discouraging word and the skies are not cloudy all day low low that after seeing that that you're encouraged to create one of these pieces and you can send it to us and we will have a archive that will continue to build um, so that would be wonderful if, if that's something that you want to do and um, just a note about that um, so we're getting a message in that uh, uh, the art pieces were fun to see and um, Holly from England is writing, uh, oh, they're planning a forest school project. Uh, she, she's a um, musician from England who's writing it on Facebook Live. Um, so 
many of the people, of course, were campers. Uh, there were also, uh, we did a lot of outreach to memory cafes uh, in, in Wisconsin and Boston participated. And, um, and our good friends up with the Imagination Network uh, up in Canada contributed as well. And, and they, they also listed, um, you know, they also used it as a workshop with, with some of the folks they work with. So we're very happy with that. Um, our next up is uh, the musical component and also the historical talk. Uh, many times at um, sleepaway camps and national parks, state parks at night, they will have an expert come in and give a talk maybe on the stars or wildlife. And so ours today is the uh, incredible Dom Flemings, and he's going to talk about uh, the history of black cowboys and play, play us a couple songs. Yeah, Gary, you know, it's part of our tradition to have an artist in residence as part of a memory camp. Uh, last year we had a tight budget, so we had to have you. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Dom would be, yeah, <laughs> would be a wonderful artist in residence. Yes. <laughs> I think but the year, the first year, didn't you have Anne? Bas Anne Basing, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so we went <laughs> rapidly downhill in the second. Oh half. no, no! <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's get a, let's take a listen to Dom and see what he's got to say. Uh, our friend here is a Grammy Award winning winning musician, and he is a singer and songwriter, a multi instrumentalist, and uh, and a historian. Oh, well, thank you so much, Gary. It's a pleasure to be with you. And uh, well, I guess I'll, I'll start off with the, the jumping off point from how we had first met. We met when I was still going to college over at Northern Arizona University, and I was doing slam poetry. So I was able to take that sort of creative energy that I had taken into writing songs and turned it into uh, prose poetry. So non-rhyming poetry, short stories and stuff. And I met people like yourself. One of the things I learned with folk songs, though, in studying literature is it it, it helped create um, a space where people's, uh, I guess, memory, cultural memory, mm -hmm. began to awaken within them. And of course, as we think about memory, we have memories that are so vivid in our minds that when we evoke them, it takes us into a whole world of our imagination that is vivid and strong, you know, and it doesn't matter what it is. Sometimes it's a favorite food. Sometimes it's a song. Sometimes it's something that your family did, you know. And so I realized that when I was learning songs and I began to study it, and then after I left Arizona and went out and began to tour as a musician, I found that that was one of the things that folk songs could do was create this evocative cultural memory. Yeah. And so to connect it back to Black Cowboys, I mention all this because when I first came across the book, The Negro Cowboys at, at the Painted Desert gift shop years ago, when I was, after I'd been touring in North Carolina and had been all over the world, I was traveling back home to Arizona to visit my family. And I stopped off at the gift shop and I saw a book on African-American cowboys called The Negro Cowboys. And it mentioned that one in four cowboys that helped settle the West were African-American cowboys, working with the Anglo cowboys and the Mexican vaqueros was out on the range and it was sort of a, a a big manifesto of the american dream happening but be all through the the hard work of range work which was in of itself the sort of uh, it was a special era because it wasn't necessarily the most glorious era of american culture but because the cowboys worked together they found um moments where they connected past uh, their differences ideologically or racially or socially or politically even and that was something that was really powerful to me so i decided to put an album together to um commemorate that idea and then also to tell a little bit of the story of my grandparents who also came out from the deep south and settled in flagstaff where my dad grew up so it kind of all came back to that original moment being in arizona in yeah. its own type of way so if you would play a song from the black cowboys album we'd appreciate that <laughs> Try to be smooth. <laughs> well, Gary, this 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 song is one called Steel Pony Blues, and this is one that I wrote uh, after reading the autobiography of one of the the famous black cowboys, Nat Love, who worked on the railroad line. He was born into slavery, and after emancipation, he worked as a Pullman porter for many years. So he was a cowboy, I guess, for about twenty years, and then 
once he found that the work was too hard after a certain point, you know, he got to a certain age where he realized that the railroad line was going to be in the railroad were going to be the future. So he, he went off of the range and he started working on the railroad line. And that idea to me, uh, which ended up being a subtitle of the Black Cowboys album, Songs from the Trails to the Rails, I just, um, I was intrigued by that notion mm -hmm. because in one generation, you can have, uh, you can have a people that, are working as uh, unpaid laborers, working with a mule and buggy. And in the course of a single lifetime, you can see their world change from emancipation and the technological advances going from, again, a horse and buggy all the way to a car on a highway. I mean, I mean, that's trains, planes, and automobiles, you know? That's, what an, an amazing notion to think that in one life you could see all that. And so I wrote this song thinking about this and, um, this is a steel pony blues and the the main line is uh, I caught my steel pony and boys I'm gonna ride you get down to whole brook won't find me there, good Lord, I got the first thing smoking down the road somewhere. Got the first thing smoking down the road somewhere. Well, I caught my steel pony and boys, I'm going to ride. Getting far too old to follow this year herd, good Lord, I caught the first thing smoking down the road somewhere. Caught the first thing smoking down the road somewhere. I caught my steel pony and boys, I'm going to ride.
Well, this song, Black Woman, is, is a, a little piece I heard from a woman named Vera Ward Hull, who recorded for a couple of different folklorists, John Lomax and Harold Corlander. And she sang just a, a big variety of material from uh, kids' music to uh, secular and religious material. And this song, Black Woman, is one that, when I started to really analyze the words, I found it made a beautiful cowboy song. And so I started singing it, I guess, 20 years ago. And as I started putting the project together, I found that it would just made a perfect introduction to the entire piece because I found that I wasn't able to find a lot of songs that spoke directly about African-American women, but this, uh, this particular field holler was one that evoked this idea of a woman being behind the cowboy and being behind the man, which I thought symbolically really, uh, you know, really filled out the picture more so than I was able to do without the song. And uh, also, uh, you know, it's a, uh, I get to use a different range of voice, uh, using a bit of my vocal contortionism. <laughs> well, here's a little bit of Black Woman, also known as the Wild Ox Moment. <clears throat> uh -huh. Well, come here, Black Woman. Uh -huh. And sit on Daddy's knee. Uh -huh. Well, I've got something to tell you, pretty mama. Uh -huh. Don't you holler, Lordy. Uh -huh. Well, I'm going back to Texas. Uh -huh. To hear that wild ox moan. Uh -huh. And if it's morning, don't suit me, black woman. Uh -huh. I'm going to drive my bell cow home. Uh -huh. Don't your kitchen feel lonesome? Uh -huh. When your biscuit roll is gone. That's it. Uh, music and singing is a huge part of memory camp, of course, and every night we have Vespers, um, which is a tradition of appreciating the day of the place and people. Um, do you guys want to say anything about Vespers? Vespers was new to me. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it's a spiritual time, but not necessarily focused on a specific religion or religiosity. It's kind of a centering experience. Uh, Moon Beach is a Christian camp but it's absolutely open to persons of all faiths or no faiths. And Vespers, like everything at memory camp, is voluntary. So some folks choose to gather morning, evening, uh, almost always by the ever-burning campfire. And there might be singing or a bit of reading uh, shared. So just a, a beautiful way to begin and draw towards the end of the day. However, it's not all serious. No, not by no means. And this next <laughs> video is going to demonstrate to you that it's not all serious. And uh, for this one, um, which I hope we don't get any interference on, um, you are uh, encouraged to join us in movements, especially- To be a moose. <laughs> this movement. Yeah. Okay, Gary. Okay, moose. we're all mooses. <laughs> This is all built into it um, to, to participate, so. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. I can see. Well, when I was in my floor, I said, whoa, a lot of coal. <laughs> Indeed. OK, are you going to help me lead? Yeah. All right, so come stand next to me, OK? This is a repeat after me song. This is a repeat after me song. So you do what I do. Do what I do. And you say what I say. And you say what I say. 
There was a great big moose. There was, there was a great big moose. moose. He liked to drink a lot of juice. He liked to drink a lot of juice. There was a great big moose. There was a great big moose. He liked to drink a lot of juice. He liked to drink a lot of juice. Sing and way oh way oh. Sing and way oh way oh. The moose's name was Fred. The moose's name was Fred. He liked to drink his juice in bed. He liked to drink his juice in bed. Sing and way away oh. Sing Sing and way away oh. John? Well, I was going to share with folks that we have a tradition on the final night of memory camp, which is actually true of all camps at Moon Beach, that there are no hoppers. Uh, Rather, the staff wait on the campers and they serve a fancy dinner. We have linen, nice tablecloths and candles, faux candles, faux candles, and yeah. fake wine, <laughs> and uh, and just a, a, a very special meal. And then those campers who wish to are invited to participate in a talent show. We also dance after dinner. And uh, I wanted to share the song I did for last mm. year's talent show, ending the memory camp. Uh, I wanted to write a song about our experience of being together at memory camp and the reality of dementia. Uh, But because our poet was from Brooklyn, (laughs) I thought it should be a doo-wop song. And it goes this way.
and hope we will gather and sing that again next year. Yes. Oh, and, and you, John, you're getting a comment uh, that that was the best. Someone wrote it. <laughs> Thank you, whoever you are. I think that was Holly. Holly. Hi, Holly. Uh, <laughs> oh, yes, that's Holly, uh, who's a Cora player from England. Uh -huh. yeah, amazing work. So, All right. So. Um, uh, you know, we just want to tell everybody thank you. Thank you to people who have written in. Thank you for everybody for watching. Uh, thank you for people for caring about what we tried to do at Memory Camp. And especially, we thank the campers who yeah. are on this uh, Zoom. Uh, yeah. We've got wonderful people watching who are with us at camp. And we sh have a huge shout out of thanks to Gary. Yeah. Because without Gary, it would have gone with, it would have been fine without me. There would have been no technical problems. No. I mean, let's be honest. The real purpose of this was to keep you off the streets and out of trouble. <laughs> hey, I got I got some breaking news. Now we're talking about taking care of people and, and yeah. reconnecting yeah. with people. Rika, uh, Rika Stanza, who is amazing, a uh, nurse and artist that I work with in Germany, and she does leads uh, dementia programs in museums with uh, Paulina Fug, and they're just fantastic. She wrote in. This is the, the, this is to you, John. She wrote in that her unborn baby started dancing in her belly. Oh, <laughs> uh -huh. isn't wow. that great? Yeah, isn't that think... so? Way oh, way oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, tell her to drink some juice for that baby. <laughs> yeah, be, be careful, uh, Rika. Have, have a little juice there. But to say, hopefully many of us will gather in person come next summer and have this amazing experience of real memory camp. I hope that for those who have participated, this brought back marvelous memories of the experiences they've had. And for those who might be candidates either to attend our camp but even more wonderfully, if there are people who would be inspired to say, I'd like to make it happen where I live, in my state, my country, whatever, we are so ready to support and help you to do that. Because uh, elders in general, uh, and uh, particularly those with dementia, are so deprived of nature, of just community where they can truly be themselves, uh, that this is healing and powerful and just a marvelous gift. So Memory Camp, just we want to see it become a global movement. Mm -hmm.
I'm in. I'm in. Now I think I'm just gonna get some. Uh, what's that called when you b b roll? Yeah, b roll. <laughs> Why are there rocks there? Why are there rocks there? It'll just be a blessing to see everyone. Just a blessing. I missed you all, and I've missed being there. And um, yeah. we'll look forward to next year. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll see everybody on the video. We hope everyone's well and uh, doing okay. And it's nice to have the kids involved today and uh, to have all generations. So thanks, Gary, for putting thanks. this together for us. There was a great big moose. There was a great big moose. He liked to drink a lot of juice. He liked to drink a lot of juice. There was a great big moose. There was a great big moose. He liked to drink a lot of juice. He liked to drink a lot of juice. Sing him way, way, oh. Sing him way, way, oh. Way, oh, 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 way, oh. I almost feel like I'm there now. Make new friends. Oh yeah, make make, make new friends, but keep the old one is silver and the other gold. Thank you, God, for giving me friends that feel like family.
we're going to do this as if we were beat poets in the 1950s and I, I don't know, maybe Allen Ginsberg's playing bongos or something. All right, so here we go. I'll say it, you say it, and you guys can say it at home. There was a great big moose. It was a great big moose. It was a great big moose. It was a great big moose. He liked to drink a lot of juice. 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 Sing way oh, sing and way oh, 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 the moose's name was Fred. He liked to drink his juice in bed. He liked to drink his juice in bed. Moose's name was Fred. Oh, his name, name was Fred. Fred. He liked to drink his juice in bed. He liked to drink his juice in bed. Sing and way oh, 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 we are, we are. Next verse uh, is Gary. Now there's a sticky moose. No, <laughs> no, no, we don't. I skipped the whole part. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. I went, I, went, I, went too, I went too far. Oh, here we go. Okay. He drank his juice with care. He, he drank, drank his juice, juice with care. care. He spilled some in his hair. But he spilled some, some in his hair. hair. Oh, he, he drank his juice with care. He drank his juice, juice with care. care. But he spilled some in his hair. But he spilled some in his hair. Singing way oh, singing way oh, 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 and he's all covered in juice. A belly full of juice. Not a belly full of juice. Is a sticky moose. Is a sticky moose. With a belly full of juice. With a belly full of juice. Singing way oh. Singing way oh. Way oh, way oh, way oh, way oh. Slow mo, slow mo, slow mo. Way oh, way oh. Way oh, way oh. Okay, that's some folks. That's a video, or we can just we can just uh, call it a day. I mean, one of the things we are getting a lot of encouragement that people are writing in that uh, they like the fact that the thing is completely falling apart, and we're yeah, <laughs> our wits ends, and we don't know what to do. Where's BB when you need her? So Everybody's <laughs> and some people are writing a no judgment. It's memory camp, and be in the right, moment. Right, right. Be in the well, moment you know, with us. You could oh, give and where's, the, uh, Phoebe? where's Phoebe when you need her? You should you should try the video of the campfire with Phoebe singing the medley, and if it doesn't work, we'll kill it and roll the credits. <laughs> okay, so number one thing. Oh, and and uh, someone's complimenting us. Uh, uh, Holly saying a great, nice madness. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the best moose of my generation destroyed by madness and juice. <laughs> So right. I think we have some words we should say before we try that video, like Susan. Well, I just want to tell everybody. Wait, wait which one? Which one yeah. are you? Uh, which one are you setting up now? This is now. Now this is actually getting fun. I like going off script. What? What are we Back doing? The script. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So. Oh uh, gosh. <laughs> well, we will post the um, complete program without the popping, without the craziness that ensued, uh, so that people can watch that if they want. And we do uh, really encourage people to, you know, if you liked creating, if you like the art that you saw or you want to create more, send that in to us and, um, and we'll have an archive of it and we'll just uh, hope that this grows and grows. Like, you know, just not to go into depth of this, but John and Susan were instrumental in bringing memory cafes uh, to Wisconsin. And now I think there's 
30 or something? I don't even know how many. Oh, far more. Uh, many, well, many, many. It's 135 in Wisconsin. 135. And you guys brought the first one there. And so there's, it, it's not out of the realm of possibility to think that we would look back on this moment and think, yeah, now there are many memory camps. Oh, uh, that'd be wonderful. Yeah. I think we're at the end of the time together. It's Roll the credits. <laughs>